beautiful people. It's your girl T and I'm back y'all. Yes, I am back. And this is going to be, I, this is my first color and chat for um, 2024. <laughs> oh man. Um, and this color and chat is for hashtag June color your horror 2024 that I co-host with my lovely, uh, lovely, lovely bestie Lavelia at Lavelia's Coloring. I will link her channel below so that you all can go and check her out. She's an amazing colorist and a very, very sweet person. All right, so we are going to be coloring in Mythic World by Kirby Rosanas. This is a page that has been a long time whip for me. Um, I love coloring his pages, but for some reason I just did not finish this page. And this is actually gonna be the first finished page in this book. So I figured um, I'd work on this page with you all um, for June Kali Horde. So this is what I have so far. And this page, I based this page with Lyra Aquacolor crayons, kind of similar to like the Neo, um, I'm sorry, the Caran d'Ache Neo Color 2s and those types of crayons. They're water soluble. So I based this page with that. Uh, with uh, with the aqua color ones by the Lyra brand. And I'm now shading this in with Faber-Castell Polychromos. So I hope that you guys enjoy this video. Um, this again is my first color in chat in a long time and I'm like, what am I gonna talk about? So I decided that for this particular video, I will talk about um, what I did at the beginning of the year, which is very exciting for me. So let me go ahead and pull out the colors I was using. I'm gonna be working on these waves. Um, I'm almost done. The very last things that I really need to do for this page are coloring the black for the snake, uh, finishing the waves. I have not yet come up with what I'm gonna do for the background just yet. Um, and then adding the gold, I'm putting gold detailing um, and on her body for these swirls, this robe or the sash that she has on will also have gold. Um, there's gonna be gold in her armband here. And I'm gonna go also with, um, I wanna, these shells, I wanna make them look like a pearl. So I'm gonna probably use some liquid pearls and just kinda, you know, get this page looking really nice. So. Hopefully you guys enjoy this. It's not going to be a, a series <laughs> because June is about over. I'm, I'm filming this on the, what's today, the 30th, I think, or 29th. And um, so I should have it done and I will post it on my community tab, um, my community page. Uh, I'll post the finished picture there so that you guys can see what it looks like finished. So, okay, let me go ahead and pull out the colors I'm using for the waves. All right, so the colors that I'm using for the waves are going to be middle phthalo blue, which is 152, and I'm also using uh, phthalo, phthalo blue, 110. All right, so... Woo, what should I talk about? We already said I was gonna talk about uh, the things that happened at the beginning of the year. I I did get a chance, you guys. It was, okay, so let me just start off with, first of all, apologizing for not ever doing color and chats. Uh, I don't think I did any hardly last year. And I didn't do <laughs> any this year until now. Um, so I want to start off by saying uh, I apologize for that. Um, it's not really my intention not to do any. It's just that I get so burnt out uh, from work that sometimes I just want to sit and do the actual coloring and do the actual crafting that I'm doing and not have to worry about turning on a screen and talking and things like that. Uh, I'm going to try to do better. We're at the middle of the year, um, and I think maybe this will kickstart me, you know, doing more of these uh, because I do kind of miss it. 
but I'm always like, what do I talk about? <laughs> what can I talk about? Do I ramble? But at least for this uh, particular video, I do have something, you know, to talk about. So I'm going to talk about my trip. I am. Um, so when I was 40, you guys, I was supposed to go to Italy. I, that was the only thing I wanted. I didn't want a big party. I didn't want, um, you know, to do any big thing like that. You know, most people like to have big parties where you're renting out a venue and having all these people come and do all of that. I just didn't want that. I'm not big on that kind of thing. My husband now, he is. He likes those kinds of things. Um, I'm not someone who likes that so much. <laughs> so I was like, I don't want a party. I don't, I don't want, you know, anything big, extravagant like that. I just want to go to Italy. It's been my dream um, for a very long time, but it even became more of a dream of mine when I started studying art and going to art school um, just to go see a lot of these, uh, I don't know, I want to call them, you know, wonders of the world, really, with my own eyes was top of my list like you know how you start thinking about life and how short it is and the things that you want to go do and see and making that bucket list well this was something on my bucket list and I was like you know what I need to go and do that because um you don't I don't know how much longer I have here on this earth <laughs> so I need to make some you know, things, write some things down that I want to do or keep those in mind. So this was one of those things. So I had some, a friend who was supposed to go, couldn't go, bailed out. So of course I didn't want to go by myself. So I was like, I'm not going to go. I'm not going. So for my 40th birthday, I didn't go anywhere. Do you guys know I've had that dream <laughs> for many years and just so happened this year I was able to go I what I did was the year before the year before the in 2023 after my birthday I was like you know what if I don't go and buy a plane ticket to go to Rome I will never go I can't sit and wait for people to plan and go with me because if I sit and wait for other people I will never go so I said you know what I have to do this for me if they if someone goes they go if they don't they don't I'm gonna go so I bought a ticket once I bought my ticket I was like hey I'm going to Italy anybody want to go <laughs> these are the dates um and uh I had I had the same friend who bailed out the last time. <laughs> um, I, you know, was she was supposed to go in it and it was just a big stink thing. I, and so I was like, well, never mind. Maybe you shouldn't go. Um, because I really don't want drama and it was just a, you know, not a, it wasn't not, not a nice thing that I went through just trying to plan my trip <laughs> for my birthday the following year. So I was like, forget it. So, and then I had some family members who wanted to go, but it just didn't work out. So here I am. It's fall. Uh, my parents didn't want me to go by myself at all. <laughs> They're like, you don't need to go there by yourself. You know, my dad was really worried about that because of all the things that, you know, you hear about women traveling alone and the things he was hearing and seeing on the news. I was like, dad, you know, I, I'm going to go. I just, I need to do this. So, uh, then I was telling my brother, uh, my, the oldest brother that I have, he's not older than me. I am the oldest, but he was like, I'll go with you. And I was like, you don't have to go just because, you know, you know, you don't have to go just because 
you know, you're worried about me. He says he didn't want me to go by myself, so he decided to go. Well, my brother's a little bougie, you guys. <laughs> and he did not, so I, I had booked a hotel and everything. He didn't like the hotel that I booked. He wanted something else. And I was like, well, I'll just stay at my hotel and you stay at yours. He's like, no, we have to stay at the same hotel. So I was like, look, I'm not, <laughs> I was like, I don't, I, the hotel he chose was so expensive, you guys. I was like, I don't want to spend that money. I don't want to spend that kind of money for somewhere to, to just hang out, just to sleep. I want to spend my money doing things in the city. That's just me. Um, some people like to spend a lot of money where they're staying at, but I don't see for me, you know, my opinion, I don't see spending that kind of money uh, for somewhere I'm just going to see when I'm resting or getting, you know, resting for the evening. And then because, uh, you know, my whole goal was to be out and about the whole day. I I didn't want to see that room <laughs> until it was time to go to bed. So hence the reason why I didn't want to spend a lot of money on a hotel room as long as it's clean. And in a nice area, I'm fine with it, you know. Now, I am kind of, I am very particular about hotels. Uh, they have to be at least three stars or I'm not staying. Um, and, but he has a, you know, higher expectation of hotels than I do. So, meaning star ratings, four and five star. So, but, you know, we got, we had a travel agent help us. And she is a friend of the family. And she was... She was pretty much on my side, but she said she understands that because she had a she has a sister who actually feels the same way like my brother. Like they want to have nice accommodations, even though they're not going to be there in the room, you know, all all day. So, so she helped facilitate <laughs> my brother paying the difference <laughs> of the hotel accommodations um, from what I was going to pay at my other accommodations so we ended up sharing a room me and my brother and um so we so that that worked out so we so we get ready to go my brother has to fly from san diego all the way here to north carolina and then um so he he flew he flew this way on my birthday and i picked him up from the airport we went out to eat um and then the very next day we were leaving for Rome. And so I was like, my brother is going to be so tired um, because he's already losing three hours coming this way to me because they're in California. They're three hours behind. So I was like, oh, man, BJ, you really need to get some sleep. <laughs> Dude, you got to sleep on the airplane in Rome because now you're going to be. We're going to be six hours behind just from North Carolina. You're going to be an additional three. That's nine hours behind. Um, so I was like, are you going to sleep on the plane? He's like, nope, I'm not sleeping on the plane. I was like, okay. <laughs> you know, what can you do? Like, he's a grown man. Do what you're going to do. Uh, but our flight, we left at like three o'clock in the afternoon, I believe, um, East Coast time. Um, and our, we had to fly to Atlanta, um, and, uh, we, we got to Atlanta and we got on our, you know, we got in our flight and we weren't sitting together. He had a different ticket than I did. So, because of course he purchases later, um, and I was sitting, he wanted an upgraded ticket. I didn't, I don't care about those things. We're both going to the same place. <laughs> We're getting there at the same time. I don't need to pay extra just for a foot rest or something. I don't care about that. So, so we, um, we weren't sitting together, but we, you know, the flight was really nice. The flight to Rome was long, but it was a, a night flight. So most people were sleeping. And so I was hoping my brother was sleeping, but he said he wasn't going to. So um, we finally, we did on the airplane though, going there, we had a, a medical, uh, event. Someone, um, someone got ill. And so we, they had to do like some type of code. I forget what code they said, 
code M or what, whatever code they, they give. Um, oh, I'm sorry, you guys. I'm also adding Prussian blue. Um, so they get a, they gave some kind of code and looking for doctors. This lady, um, it was like maybe a little more than halfway through the flight. I was having a medical event and I was like, Oh God, what do we, what do they do when this happens? Um, I'm like, we're over water, not realizing they fly us over mostly over land, um, to get to Rome. But needless to say, that was pretty scary. She was having a, I guess, a low blood sugar and she was feeling sick and they, um, had a, a doctor come and check on her. Somebody who had medical experience, I guess, come in and check on her. So I was like, wow. Um, so then, you know, the, then we got calm again and then we, you know, we finally get to Rome. I, I think the, the flight was perfect. I didn't have any issues with the person I was sitting with. They were very nice Italian, um, people. They were actually telling me, you know, what to avoid, um, you know, when shopping in Italy and stuff like that. The young, um, the woman was a teacher and she was telling me that once she gets to Rome, she has to still get on a bus and go an hour this way. And then they have to get to their car and then drive another couple hours this way. I was like, wow. She goes, yes, you know, that's a, it's long for us. But she said, you know, she has a sister who lives in the U.S. And that's why she was, you know, flying back home from visiting her sister. So <clears throat> needless to say, it was a really nice flight. And I was so excited when they were like, oh, we're landing. We're about to land. I was like, oh, you know, I'm so giddy because, of course, this is my dream. Oh, my gosh, I'm living my dream. <laughs> and uh, I was just so excited, you guys. And we got there. We, we, we got off the plane. And then we had to go through customs. Let me tell y'all. <laughs> Oh, if you can do the the early, I think there's a new thing where you can do it early, go through, like do all the custom checks and where you can just flash your passport and they'll know that you've gone through all those checks and stuff. Do that. <laughs> we stood in line for probably, I'm going to say probably like an hour to an hour, maybe hour and a half, maybe an hour, hour and a half waiting to go through customs because it was crowded. So many people were trying to get to Italy um, you know, get through the customs in Rome, um, on the day that we were flying in. So, but you know, they're pretty, the customs process was pretty smooth there. We didn't get hung up or anything. It was just the wait. And then it was warm where they have you waiting. I think they want people to sweat for, you know, the people who are doing criminal things, they want to see you're getting antsy, uh, <laughs> nervous, super sweaty. So they can like, what are you, what's going on? Why are you, you know, why are you looking like that? You know, I think that they do that for a reason. So we went through, then we had to go look, get our bags. And so, um, that was pretty easy. It wasn't difficult. We were at one um, turnstile or area and I was like, I don't think this is it because I was watching people um, who were on our plane going to a different, I said, let's go try this one. So I saw my bags, my brother was not seeing his and so he was getting a little panicked. I was like, just wait, it's probably just, you know, not come out just yet. So finally he sees his bag and we're on our way. Um... You know, the whole experience at the airport was not as bad as I thought it was going to be. And it was a lot smoother than I anticipated. And I just was so ready, you guys. I was like, oh my gosh, let's let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> so we get out there and, uh, you know, the first thing, I, I know I did a lot of research. My brother did too. But I think he missed the part about not just taking any cab. Um or anyone offering a ride because it could be a scam. You don't know where people are taking you and to always use uh, the cab companies that um, are set up, you know, by the the city, or I guess, and 
and they have a special line you wait in to do that. Well, while we were waiting in line to catch one of the cabs, because I remember, you know, that information, um, this, <laughs> this guy comes up to us and was like, hey, I'll take you guys where you need to go and uh, come with me, come with me, come with me. And my brother was like, let's go, T. I was like, no. <laughs> I was like, no. I said, you don't remember reading that? Did you read that about making sure not to get in, you know, to use the cabs that are set up here? He's like, oh. I was like, yeah, no. I said, no, thank you. We'll wait. <laughs> so it cost us $50 to get from the airport to the city, which was actually reasonable considering it was two of us. Um, you pay just for the actual, uh, you can, you know, however many people you're traveling with, you just pay one price, which that is really nice. Um, so we were driving down the highway. This cab driver is killing it on the highway. My brother's like, put your seatbelt on. <laughs> he's looking at me like, man, he's driving crazy. I think he was hitting like uh, at least almost a hundred miles an hour, like taking us to Rome. So, and I was like, I don't notice, I didn't notice any, um, signs that said, you know, what the speed limits were. <laughs> so I don't know if they have like, they have willy nilly rights to just drive crazy, but he was driving mighty crazy. <laughs> but, um, that was a, that was a cool ride. The guy was really nice. Um, he knew exactly where our hotel was and uh, we get there, you know, you don't even pay them tip. You're not supposed to give them tip, but my brother gave them a tip. They are, they just get their cab fare and they go. Um, so, but my brother gave him a tip, which is fine. So we get there and the hotel is absolutely gorgeous. I was like, oh my goodness, I'm so happy you chose this and you're paying the difference. And he was looking at me crazy. I was like, yeah, this is nice. Uh, but the hotel was gorgeous. It had a rooftop, uh, at a rooftop bar. It had, um, a restaurant. It also had this like coffee, a uh, cafe coffee shop for the mornings. Um, nice, beautiful lobby. I'll pop a picture up on the screen so you can see, um, what the hotel lobby looked like. The room was gorgeous. We had a nice suite and it had a, um, a little like a uh, balcony where you guess it's almost like a terrace instead of a balcony. Um, and from, from the terrace, when I, you look to the right, you could see, um, Santa Maria Maggiore, which was one of the places I wanted to go see, um, with my own eyes. <laughs> uh, and it was so nice to just know that was right there. Like as soon as you go to the hotel, it's like right across the street is this, beautiful church um this it's, it was gorgeous so of course me i'm like okay let's let's put our stuff down let's go let's go <laughs> my brother mm, he was like i need to take a nap i was like what ah <laughs> oh, you should have slept on the airplane dude he was like i couldn't i didn't want to sleep on the airplane i was like i said we're here it's like two o'clock in the afternoon like what do you what are you doing? He's like, I have to take a nap. I have to. I was like, oh. So I was like, okay, I'll, I'm going down. He's like, do not leave the uh, hotel, T. <laughs> I was like, come on. He's like, no, because if something happens to you, then I'm not going to know, blah, 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 blah. He's like, don't leave the hotel. And I was like, oh, okay, I won't. And so uh, went, I went down to the lobby um, just checking out the hotel, what they had to offer. And then I was just enticed, you guys. When This lobby was huge, but when you go to the front where, you're, where the restaurants and, or the, where the cafe is, it's a big open door saying, come experience Rome, come experience Rome. And I went outside. <laughs> I went out that door and I went to experience just a little bit uh, I don't want my brother to get pissed at me <laughs> when he would wake up and couldn't find me or something like that in the lobby. So all I did was I walked to the corner and I stood there. I just wanted to hear the sounds 
of people speaking Italian. And I wanted to see the hustle and bustle of the city. I just wanted to like, you know, have all those. I wanted to experience all the sensories that were going on with me already, you know, just being there. So I was like, I have to get, get out this door. So of course I did. <laughs> and I saw that there were gelato, um, gelato shops right there across the street. There were bakeries, there was like shopping. Um, the Maggiore uh, was there and I was just like, oh my gosh. So I sat in the lobby for a little while and then it was like maybe, I let him sleep a couple hours and I was like, okay, he's gotta get up. <laughs> because there's something we can actually do right now before on our first day and get that out of the way and have an experience. So before I did that, I did go to the to the um, front desk and I was like, hey, my brother really wants to try carbonara. Um, what's the best place to get carbonara? And um, and they, you know, gave me directions to this lovely restaurant uh, for some um, carbonara. And uh, I went upstairs to wake his, his butt up. <laughs> I was like, look, the Maggi already closes soon. And we need to get there because I really want to see that. And I, I know we have a lot of other things that we want to do. This, you know, this place was not top of my bucket list to go see while I was here. But it's right across the street. We got to get there. So we get there. And you guys, oh, I cried like a baby. I didn't boohoo boohoo, but I teared up. It was the most magnificent thing I'd ever seen. Um, uh, all of the marble, everything was marble and gold gilding and, oh, just so gorgeous. Uh, and it was amazing. So we did that the first night and then we went to go eat dinner and of course had to stop to get a gelato. <laughs> Why come here and not have gelato? So I got a gelato and then we went back to the uh, hotel room because it, by that time it was, you know, late. And so we, we went to bed and so we got to go do a lot in Rome. We went to see the Colosseum. We had a tour of the underground and the uh, Eternal City right across the street with all of the different um, archaeological locations. We went to... Um, we took a tour to the Amalfi Coast and went to go see Pompeii. We took a train to Florence to do shopping and sightseeing. Um, and, you know, we did, we had shopping days where we just shopped and walked around the city of Rome. I mean, I had the time of my life, you guys. So if you've never been <laughs> to Rome, I'm going to suggest that you go. It's a beautiful city. I felt so safe. I did not feel like um, I was going to be, you know, attacked by anyone. I even felt safe to walk around by myself. There were, there was a couple uh, days where my brother was super tired. And it, it, again, it's because he didn't sleep in the, the big, huge time change for him. Um, but there were some time, some days where he said, just, just, uh, share your location with me. <laughs> I had to go to sleep. I'm like, dude, you're sleeping too much. <laughs> so he had to go to sleep. So uh, I got to kind of ex explore by myself. And that's when I went to go look at some art shops. And I do have a video. If you're interested, you can check out my haul videos. It's I think it's titled uh, What I Bought in Italy as far as um, art supplies and like stuff for coloring. Um so I went, I got to go to bookstores looking for coloring books. I got to go to art stores looking for supplies that I don't already have. And, um, I got to go check out bakeries and, you know, and just kind of explore by myself a bit. And I felt so safe. No one bothered me the whole time, even when I was by myself at nighttime or dusk. And, um... I just truly enjoyed that trip. Uh, my favorite, the highlights of that trip, although although I loved the Amalfi Coast, it's like heaven. I could not imagine living there because of 
how, how difficult it is to get there because that was the most scariest part of the trip was actually the drive to Amalfi Coast. Um, we didn't drive. We took a tour bus. But the tour bus can only go so far down the um, the road to get to Amalfi before they had to pull over on the side of the road. <laughs> Mind you, on the they're pulled over into the side of the road where there's like enough room for buses to park there. But when you get out of the bus, there is a little bit of, uh, not even a sidewalk, a little bit of ground. And then there's a rail. And on the other side of it is a cliff down to the water. So you can imagine driving down that is very dangerous. And uh, a lot of people were not looking out of the window because they were really nervous about that. <laughs> I, I looked out of the window because I wanted to get some great pictures and I was able to get some. Uh, and But that was scary because then we had to get off of this bus and then we had to get on smaller smaller uh, buses that they use as, a, as far as like their, their uh, local like, you know, transit, transit buses. We had to get on those to get to Amalfi. So then... Uh, we, we finally get there and oh my gosh, this is breathtaking. So although I loved Amalfi, I think that was the highlight of the trip. Rome has surpassed all of my expectations. Um, even Florence, when I was there, I was like, oh my goodness, when I come back here, I probably will start in Florence and then take a train um, down to Rome and stay the, the remainder to see some of the things that I didn't get to see while I was there. Uh, Rome is huge. There's so much to see. And I think the next time I go, I'm just going to go to the places that I didn't get to see or places I wanted to go to at nighttime, but my brother wasn't uh, awake enough to do anything. <laughs> so I'll probably go to some of those places at night just to get the night uh, experience. And then um, definitely want to go to Tuscany because that was on the list. But um, we had to like narrow our list down. And of course, we chose um, the Pompeii uh, trip over that. So, yeah. So I really had a fabulous time there. I just, I just, oh man, the food was delicious. Uh it tastes so fresh and preservative free. I don't know how to explain this. It tasted just like it came from, you know, someone's garden. Um, like the veg, the vegetables or it just tastes like it was so, I can't even explain it. Just so fresh and, um, didn't weigh you down. I didn't, I didn't experience any stomach issues and the, the mozzarella there, the gelato, the pizza. Oh my goodness, the pizza is amazing. Um, I had both the Roman style pizza and I had the um, Nepalese or Naples style pizza. Um, I also tasted the different ways that they make artichoke. They have a Jewish, Roman Jewish way and then they have just the Roman way. So... I tasted that and I, it just, oh my goodness, you guys, it was amazing. The food, the people, um, the people at the hotel were just amazing. Um, and I got to share my, uh, channel information with a few of them. And, um, it was so nice. Even when it was time to say goodbye, the young lady from the restaurant, I had a, you know, she, anytime we go in there to eat, she was so nice. She would talk to us and laugh with us and, you know, trying to get my brother to speak Italian and, you know, ordering his food with her in Italian. And he was like, not really good at it. <laughs> we were laughing at him and it was just a really great time. People were so friendly. I didn't experience, experience anything negative. Um, not nothing so negative that you know that wouldn't be expected. I didn't experience anything that would say I would never ever go there again. It was a beautiful experience, and 
and I just cannot wait to go again. <laughs> so the plan was to do that again for my 50th, which is coming up in a few years. And, but then I was like, well, I have another place on my bucket list I want to get to. And that would be uh, Brazil, Brazil. I really want to go to Brazil. And I also want to go to Greece. So I'm going to see what I'm going to do. I'm not really sure yet. Um, I kind of want to get some of the other places off the list. And then I can circle back and go to some other places. But we'll see. We will see. So I took a lot of pictures, you guys, when I was there. Um, I kind of did like a photo journal kind of thing every night before I went to bed and shared with the people uh, who are friends with me on Facebook. And um, I'm telling you guys, uh, all of the places I went and the things I got to see some of the, I got to see the, um, the, I went to, I got to go to the Pantheon and that was one of the main places I wanted to go because I wanted to actually see the Oculus with my own eyes. And when I saw it again, teared up, I took pictures with the Oculus behind me. Um, I'll pop a picture of that in if I remember to do that while I'm editing. Uh, oh, the Oculus, St. Peter's Basilica was gorgeous. We went up this. We went up to the top. Boom! That was very, very uh, hard, going up to the top of that uh, to see the Eternal City with a three hundred sixty sixty degree view. the The way up there was was oh my god! We have people who could not because it's kind of like claustrophobic. You're going up over five hundred stairs. It was the toughest thing I've ever done. <laughs> Um, by way of like going to see something and uh, we had people who were actually crying and having to go back down the opposite way because they couldn't finish um, my brother stopped at one section and was like T I think this is where I stop I'm like what what are you talking about he's like look at this and I'm like what he goes look we have to go up next and we look to go I'm, I go look and I'm like oh my god I think the staircase was like, the stair itself to get up to this last part was probably like, uh, and I'm probably exaggerating a little bit, it was less than an, a two foot uh, step. Each step was less than two feet. And it was a spiral, closed in spiral type of staircase that you had to hold a rope to go up. My brother's like, how am I going to get up there? We're these like tall wide, broad-shouldered American people. <laughs> He's like, how am I supposed to get up there? I said, B, you can do it. Come on. And so we went up there and he was not happy because he, <laughs> he was not happy about it. But we got to the top. I went to go take pictures. I was like, this is absolutely worth it. Um, Would I do it again? No. <laughs> um, but it was so absolutely worth it. Uh, I'm glad that we did decide to do that, and um, it's something we can say we 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 did, we accomplished it, and then the reward of what we got to see when we were up there was just absolutely amazing. I will pop a picture of that um, in the uh, on the screen too. Beautiful! Oh my gosh, the Eternal City is gorgeous, and. Um, and, you know, just, just, just having those experiences and then also being able to have that with my brother. I don't know, you know, you don't know when you're going to be able to have those kinds of experiences with your loved ones, but I'm so happy that I was able to do that. I think the next big trip that I do, I want to try to get my husband to go. He doesn't like flying more than, he doesn't even like flying to California. So <laughs> he thinks it's too long. So I don't think he's going to make it to these places across the sea. So I don't know. I might be going with more, you know, relatives. Like I have a sister-in-law um, in California, my brother's wife, they love to travel abroad. And so, you know, she might be my travel partner because um, my brother will let her, you know, will say, go with my sister. 
because she was going to also go, but she couldn't, um, she couldn't go with me to Italy this time. But yeah, so, um, it was a beautiful, beautiful trip and I absolutely loved it. It was a trip of a lifetime for me and it sparked a desire for me to want to get out and do that more. So if you've never never been abroad and you are going to do that, just know that you are going to want to keep doing that different places. Um, I already have that urge like, oh, I need to go go online and see, you know, what ticket I'm going to buy next year <laughs> because I am buying one. <laughs> Where we go, I don't know if it's going to be a family, whole family trip. I don't know. It just depends. Um, you know, it just depends on what's going on at the time. If my husband can get time off, if if um, I can get, I can always get time off, but it, it may be harder for him to get time off. Does he want to travel that far or are we going to do something more family oriented and like go to um, an island somewhere and just sit on the beach and enjoy each other's company uh, with the kid, with the little one, and maybe my oldest might want to go. Um, so we'll see. But we're definitely going to be doing something. Um, but yeah, I I thoroughly enjoyed myself, as you guys can already tell. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, but yeah, so the best advice I could give if you are on the fence of traveling because you don't want to go alone even if you might have to go alone, don't not do it. Um, because you never want to have regrets. You know, woulda, coulda, shoulda um, when it's too late. You want to be able to enjoy life. And if you, if you, part of enjoying life means you want to go abroad, um, go abroad. Don't, Go, don't not go. Um, you know, you can, if you're going to do it and you know you don't have anyone to go, do it with a, a group of people. Um, like a travel group. Um, the only thing I would say, and I'm going to say this because I'm, I'm a person who doesn't like a lot of planning, planning, uh, not planning, but a lot of, a lot of itineraries. So, we used, um, I forget the name of the company we used to find our tours that we did. Um, I, I, I know why people like tours, uh, but me, I'm one of those people that, uh, I, I don't really like them that much because certain places, yes, you know, difficult places to get. Like I would not go to Malfi Coast if I wasn't on a tour because they know how to get there. They get us there safely they talk about, you know, do's and don'ts and different things like that, right? But what you don't, when you're doing them for, say, like the Coliseum, like we did, you don't get a lot of time to to just ooh and ah and and just sit there and soak it in. It's these these tour guys, they have other tours to do, so they're getting you in, getting you out, kind of thing. And I don't like being rushed. <laughs> I'm in the eternal city. I'm, I want to see it. I don't want to rush through it. I want to experience it. And so the, that's the only downside for me doing tours is that, or tour guides or even going with tour groups is that you're going to have to, you know, remember that, you know, that there's, they're on a time, they have time stamps or time limits for each thing that they do. And they're trying to get you in and get you out. Um, and you may not like that. If you're someone who wants to stroll and just soak it in. And if you want to sit and stare at something for 20 minutes, you want to sit and stare at that thing for 20 minutes. Um, so there were, there was one tour my brother did that I didn't want to do. And it was when we went to, um, Oh my goodness. It was it was when we went to um to see St. Peter St. Peter's Basilica in the Vatican, um, which had the Sistine Chapel. Now, he bought a tour and I was like, I don't wanna do all those tours. So I didn't do that tour. He did that tour. And um 
he was done with his tour and I was just in, I was just exiting the Sistine Chapel. Now, mind you, I didn't have to wait in line. I didn't get to skip any lines waiting, but in waiting for entry to the Vatican, I was able to talk with some lovely, lovely people and in the line, you know, and just people are so nice. They were not, uh, they were not from there. Um, I forget where they were from, um, but they were from Europe and they were so kind and so nice. And we just, we stood there, we talked, we laughed, we, you know, exchanged our names and, you know, information and stuff. And it was really nice. Uh, so by the time we got inside, <laughs> my brother was like texting me, um, are you done yet? I'm like, what? <laughs> you guys are done? You guys saw, you guys saw the, the Vatican, all of those, all of those, um, beautiful art pieces and things, the tapestry room, the Sistine Chapel, you saw all that and the entire St. Peter's Basilica in two hours. There's no way that I would have wanted to do that. Um, you know, so I was so happy I didn't do that because I would have been really mad. They were like rushing people through that. So, you know, I'm just saying all that to say, just keep in mind, you know, when you're booking a tour, look at the time of that tour and what they're doing. If they're seeing like, four different locations and it's only a two hour tour, just know you're going to be rushed. If you're seeing a, a tour and it's um, only one thing, like maybe just the Sistine Chapel and it's a two hour tour, know you're going to be able to stop and, and take your time to go through that. So I think that, you know, next time, I'm not sure if he's going to make that same decision to, to go that way. Um, if he ever goes back, I think his next place he wants to go is Japan. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it was really, really great. Um, and I hope that you guys enjoyed hearing me talk a little bit about it. Um, because this is my first color and chat and, and I did anticipate talking about it when I was doing my first color and chat. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Okay, so I think I've done all the shading in the water that I want to do. Maybe over here a little bit. Um, the only thing I really have left to do, again, is the gold detailing. And depending on how I feel when I'm done, because I like the black lines in the water, but then I think if I go over those with white, it would even look better. So I'm going to make that decision later once this whole thing is done. Um, just going to see where else I'd like to add a little bit of blue that I didn't. Yeah, so you guys, if you've traveled anywhere, let me know in the comment section where you've traveled to. And, you know, what your experiences have been, any suggestions of where to go, <laughs> any suggestions. All right, now I'm going to move to doing um, some of the snake. And I'm going to be using black, my black. All right, so with this... um. I don't know how, how detailed I'm going to get on this because I also had another idea of using um, some black, uh, it's called black magic glitter glue all over the snake. So I think I, what I'll do is just do a little shading before I add the black magic glitter glue because I want him to be shiny, but I do want to, you know, have a little bit of shading under, under him. So this page is probably going to end up being really glittery and kind of bright we'll see I don't want to mess it up because I've taken so long to do, to do this um this picture I kind of just want to keep it kind of simple um just you know add a little bling here and there a little shading here and there I really like basing pages 
uh, with something if I can. If not, it can be all pencil work. Like I'm working on something now that's all pencil work and I'm really enjoying it because the paper is great. So I'm just trying to give him a little bit of shading around his edges. Um, and I think I'm gonna test out the Black Magic <clears throat> glitter glue on him in an area that if it if I if I decide to keep it, it's not gonna make it's not gonna be too big of a deal if I don't like it. It wouldn't be like his whole this section here and like don't put it anywhere else because then I'd be like I have to put it everywhere now <laughs> so but yeah yeah so yeah but share with me you guys your travel experiences anywhere you've been that you really enjoyed any recommendations for family trips with children under the age of 12 or around the age of 12. Uh, we're not really into cruising. My husband will not do it. <laughs> so thank you for those suggestions, but we'll probably not do something like that. Although the little one wants to, he wants to get on. Um, I think it's Royal Caribbean has this. They're, they have like one of the biggest or second largest ships in the world, and he wants to cruise that for a family vacation. Um, my husband's like, I was trying to get my husband on board. He's like, let's just try it. You know, let's just let's just say we we we've done it. And he is just not sure about that. <laughs> but I can. I'm also with him because you know you're hearing all these things happening out in the ocean. It's like, do you want to really be out on a boat? I don't know. <laughs> but sometimes, you know, you got to try things before you say you don't like it. I have a feeling, I have a feeling that he'll get on a ship, my husband, and he'll actually enjoy it. His mother said, his mother, who's claustrophobic, went on a ship and she was nervous about it too. But she said she absolutely loved it. And to me... I know her. It's so shocking to hear her say that about a cruise because <laughs> she is very claustrophobic and she does not, uh, she doesn't like everything. And so when she said that, I was like, wow, your mom liked the cruise, babe. We should try it. And he's like, I need my feet on, on land all the time. <laughs> But I know it's because he sits and watches. He watched something where a cruise ship where it they got caught in a storm and the ship was tossing, you know, side by side, side to side, and people were being tossed all across the dining room. And I was like, I don't think that that's something that happens all the time. I think that they try to prepare people for those types of things. But he saw many videos about stuff like that. And so he's not willing to do it. <laughs> so don't watch videos about things that you want to do because it might make you not want to do it. That's the moral of that story. And that's the moral of that story. So. Yeah, so I'm just going to keep adding this here. Now, there is a cruise that I really want to do. I think it's a bucket list type of thing. Um, and it is on mine. So one day in this lifetime, hopefully I will be able to do this. Um, basically, it's it's a cruise that leaves. Okay, so I think you have to fly to, I think you have to fly to Amsterdam. But it's a cruise that goes through the different fjords of Norway. And it's a five-star cruise. Like, I mean, it's a it's a very expensive cruise. Uh, it's I think it's got the five-star rating. And the chefs that are cooking on this cruise are Michelin chefs, from what I understand. And every single room faces out. Every single room has a view. 
in like a balcony area because of course you know they're sailing and you get to see the fjords and then they have places you that you stop and you get to go see waterfalls and different things like that and i think that is amazing um that is something i watched a video of this cruise i forget the name of it but i will know it when i get ready to book one ever you know when i get ready to book it but it's um i was watching the video and this um this man this this man took his he bought he surprised his wife with this cruise because she'd been wanting to do it and they interviewed them on this when they were uh stopped viewing i think one of the waterfalls and she just came to tears just she said this you know she was like it's the most amazing thing she's ever done in her life and that just being able to see God's glory and all of these waterfalls and all of these beautiful um landscapes that you would never see you know in America or or anywhere because it's there <laughs> was the best thing she'd ever done in her life. And I was like, oh my goodness. And she was just crying, boo-hoo crying. I didn't boo-hoo cry when I went to Rome because I didn't want to embarrass myself. <laughs> but I did. I teared up. And I feel, I feel what she's feeling. I was like, yes, I get you, girl. <laughs> I get you. I totally understand that. And so I was just like, man, what they were showing is like, I want to see that with my own eyes. It's gorgeous. Um, Norway is a gorgeous place. And so, uh, yeah, so that's that's now on my bucket list <laughs> um, is to take a cruise and through the fjords of, of Norway. Um, if you are watching and you've already done that trip or you know what I'm talking about, put a comment i'd love to read what what you experienced with doing that if you did that cruise or is it something that you also have on your bucket list i'd like to know all right so yeah i'm just giving him a little bit of shading not too much because again i'm gonna go over that with some now the the glitter glue that i'm going to use is not it's more transparent kind of it's not and it has a lot of it has lots of glitter so i'm hoping that the shading will show be in you know in between there we'll see or show underneath the glitter glue i'm not going to put it on too thick uh, but it will be on the snake if uh, if it works out <laughs> so I don't want to ruin this page. I want to make it really nice since I'm taking forever to, to do it. <laughs> and my little black pencil is getting pretty short. It's going to give me any room to not hold it so close to the tip. Let's see over here. Sometimes um when I'm when I base pages with uh the Lyra Aqua Color, some of the paper is not so nice. <laughs> And it doesn't want to take any um, pencil on top. Kirby's books will do it. Um, especially with Prismacolor. I think this is the first time I'm doing it ever with... Uh, not ever. Well, in Kirby's books, yes. This is the first time I'm doing it with Faber-Castell colored pencils. I usually do this with uh, Prisma. I just wanted to try something different. <clears throat> so we're going to see how I like it in the end. Um, I like the way the color is showing up. I think um, her skin is not so great, but she's from underwater. So I'm not too 
worried about that um, too much. I might do a little touch up on her. But for the most part, um, she's done. Except for her, her little head pieces and stuff. Um, but yeah, so this is my first time really doing this with polychromos on this paper with my Lyra base. I think I'll try it another time using um, Neocolor 2s and just to see how it will take the pencil on top. So you guys like me, I don't like that the holidays fall smack dab in the middle of the week. Because, you know, if you get the day off for work, you know, some companies are not doing two days. You're only getting that the 4th of July. Like, people go and they hang out all day 4th of July and then they want to rest the next day. So we're not doing that. We just... um because I think the 4th falls on a Thursday this year. If I'm not mistaken, it falls on a Thursday. And the funny thing is, we work half day Friday. So I was like, why didn't they just give us Thursday and Friday? I have a feeling we might get a nice surprise, but I don't know. So we get to leave. When, it, when it's a holiday, we get to leave um, two hours early the day before the holiday. And then we have a holiday off. Um, Christmas, they give us more than one day. Just depends on when, when it falls in, in the week. Usually we get the day after as well. Um, and maybe the day before, depending. Um, so, yeah, but 4th of July is just not falling right this year. <laughs> and so I had already gotten questions from my team because I'm a manager. And I manage, I think, seven or eight people. And they're like... You think we're going to, I'm like, I don't know. Uh, at this time, you guys plan to be at work on the day after. Um, but at least, at least it's work from home. It's not a day that we have to go into the office. So, um, most people are okay with that. You can stay in your pajamas. <laughs> I don't think I have any meetings scheduled with them, uh, via zoom they usually will put a shirt on or you know be presentable for the meeting so i just um i was like yeah i know i understand i wish it wouldn't be like this either <laughs> but it is what it is and we got to be grateful for what we get and uh and most of them are grateful they're just you know inquiring they just want to know are they going to do anything special um because sometimes our boss will will say you know what like for christmas last year we had to come in two days of the two days. Um, he was like, you know what? Everyone can just work from home the whole week of Christmas, and people were really happy about that. <laughs> and have to come in, um, you know, they're really nice about making you know things a little nicer and more enjoyable for us, especially around the holidays. You want to be with family, and a lot of times I think it's too they want to be with their families. <laughs> You know, the COOs and the GMs and stuff want to be with their families. And so they make, um, you know, they'll allow us to do special stuff like, you know, work from home for the whole week. So, but yeah, 4th of July is not falling right. And my husband has to work. I'm like, oh, so I was like trying to figure out what are we going to do for 4th of July as far as food because, you know, usually for a holiday we like to make, we like to cook out on the grill. We don't usually have people over, but it's just more so for us. And so I was telling my husband, I don't want like hot dogs, hamburgers, ribs. I don't, I don't want that. And so I was like, let's do like, let's do a fish fry. So I think we're going to do a fish fry and then we're going to also do barbecue chicken. And he was like, let's put some, um, some pork steaks or pork chops or something on there too. And I was like, okay, I just don't want burgers and hot dogs. <laughs> I don't want that.
want that. We had that for Memorial Day. I don't want that. <laughs> Although we also had ribs too, so. Um, I don't want that this time. Plus two, he's not going to be here. So if we do grill, it's going to be the oldest one doing the grill. Or my husband's going to grill the night before so that we don't have to worry about it. Um, and he, he showed my, he shows my son how to use the barbecue grill and stuff. So, or he can, my son can do it that, that day. Barbecue that chicken. I just want like grilled chicken breasts. I don't know. And I don't know, I'm going to make a potato salad or something. We'll see. I, I just want something different. I don't want the normal stuff. <laughs> the normal 4th of July foods. And I get like that sometimes. I don't know about you. You get tired of certain kinds of foods for holidays. Um, we do change up Christmas. We don't have traditional Christmas dinners. So we do something really special. It's And it's now a tradition. We've started for a couple of years. So, looking forward to this year at Christmas. We'll see what country wins the, the draw for our Christmas dinner. But, yeah, so. And then my husband wanted to go get fireworks down in South Carolina. And he has to work. So, it's like, okay, when are you guys going to go get that? Because you're going to have to do that way before the 4th, which only gives you, like, Sunday, maybe Monday. It's like only a three hour drive. They just want to go get to the border of um, South Carolina and get some fireworks. And I was like telling my husband, it looks like you're going to have to get the fireworks from, from Walmart's parking lot here in North Carolina. He's like, oh, I don't want those kind of fireworks. They don't go up in the sky. <laughs> they're not the kind that you can get in, in South Carolina. And they're not. And I'm kind of happy about that because I don't want anybody getting hurt. <laughs> But we, but he buys fireworks from down there and, you know, and, and my son being a little older, he's 11 now, he would be very, very, um, excited and intrigued to over those kind of fireworks versus the, you know, the duds, <laughs> they call them the duds, the dud kind, the kind that don't go up in the air. <clears throat> so... I'm nervous about, um, I've always been nervous when he does those fireworks from South Carolina, but he knows what he's doing. It's just that anything could happen, right? And I'm a worry wart. So <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 no. Usually, I'll, and I already told him, I was like, you get those fireworks. Christian is not <laughs> going to be down there while you're down there lighting them because he's 11 and he's going to want to do it. And uh, uh, <laughs> you just sit up here and watch. <clears throat> And so, but yeah, so we don't typically go to watch them anywhere. I think we've, we've done that once, but the traffic is so bad when you're trying to go see fireworks and stuff that it's not, sometimes it's not even worth it. It's like, no, I think I messed up right here. That's okay. Um, it's not even worth going sometimes. I'm like, no, I don't want to deal with traffic. And so that's usually why my husband gets um, fireworks and we just do our own little show in our backyard. <laughs> Luckily, we have uh, cool neighbors who don't get upset about that kind of thing. And, um, you know. Give people a little grace because we just want to have a little fun, not putting anybody in danger, but ourselves because <laughs> it's on our side of the fence. So, um, yeah, yeah, I think he's turned out pretty nice. Um, we'll see what he looks like with that glitter. I probably won't. I'm not going to do that on screen. I already know that. Uh, I'm going to do all the embellishing and stuff off screen. I just wanted to do this color and chat uh, for the hashtag June color your hoard. Um, 
and talk a little bit with you all. I didn't do a live this time because I just, um, I couldn't get it scheduled the way I wanted it to be scheduled. So I figured instead of doing a live, I would do a color and chat. And since too, I haven't done one of these in a long time. So <laughs> kind of, it kind of, it kind of works out Two it kills two feet, two birds with one stone. I'm doing the color and chat and I'm also doing color your hoard. So And if you're new to the channel and you have not yet, um, and you are a colorist and you have not yet done one of the Color Your Hordes, we'd love to have you submit your colorings on Instagram. If you search hashtag June Color Your Horde 2024 on Instagram, you'll see all of the lovely images that had, have already been colored by lots of different colorists who submit pictures. You can see them there. And then if you have something you want um, to share, you can also share your colored images there. Um, if you're not a colorist and you just wanna see, you're more than welcome to go on Instagram and look up that hashtag and you'll see all of the, again, beautiful colorings that we receive for this hashtag. Um, there are a lot of different um, color alongs on Instagram. So if you're someone who's like, you know, I, I never know uh, really what to color. I don't, you know, I, sometimes I, I get stuck. Of, what should I color? The hashtags and the color alongs are really good because they have uh, themes. And so you can, you know, choose one of the themes that you like and go find a coloring book um, you know, to color in. So I like them. I haven't done many of them here lately, but I was doing them kind of like, I think mid last year. So I'm thinking about, um, getting back to it. Of course I'm doing this one because I'm co-hosting it, but there are a lot of cool ones out there. Lots of different coloring books, um, that people are doing them from. And so I would admonish you to go check that out if you're someone who wants to, you know, partic participate in something like this. Um, if you are new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed, I would love for you to subscribe. Just click the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you're notified every time that I upload a video. Um, I would greatly appreciate your support. It's always appreciated. Um, if you're not new and you're watching, I'd love for you to click the like button because it helps the channel. Um, if you want to make a comment, you want to share this video, I'd also appreciate that. Um, I love all of my subscribers, the ones who reach out to me and um, who encourage me through their comments and saying nice things all the time. I really um, appreciate it. You just don't know how much that means to me. Uh, I've been having a rough um, year from well, probably when I got back from Italy to now. It's been kind of rough. Things are on the up. Um, so those who made any types of comments on any videos between then and now and have been so kind, you don't know what those meant to me just to to see that kind of support and know that people do uh, do care and, and do like the content that I'm um, that I share. Um, I don't know. It's just when you're going through things, sometimes you think the whole world is against you, <laughs> and that's not the case. It's just how you're feeling at the moment. Uh, but I want to say again, thanks to those people who contact me outside of. Um, YouTube and you know send me messages on Facebook and and stuff like that I greatly appreciate your friendship and your kindness uh, those people who send me happy mail 
or if you even if you want to just send me a letter or a card I appreciate all of that it's it's a thought that counts and even if you don't want to do that and just make a comment that's even um, that's even good too it's all appreciated it's all welcomed it's all loved and cherished <laughs> because you don't have to you know you don't have to so I thank you all right so I think I'm gonna be done here for this um, June color your hoard I'm gonna say sorry to Lavelia <laughs> We're not doing what I was supposed to do this month. <laughs> but you know, we, we are both busy ladies. Uh, we have a lot going on and we try our best. And sometimes things don't just work, don't work out the way we planned. Um, but it's okay, right? So this picture will hopefully be done because I'm going to finish this sometime today. Um, I do need to stop and um, do a little tidying up um, in my garage. And try to stay cool while doing it because it's hot outside it's almost like in the hundreds but i think this is where i'm going to stop i hope that you guys have enjoyed this video um again give it a thumbs up if you did and don't forget to submit your colorings for hashtag june color your hoard before the end of the month which will be in a day or two here and um and then look forward, we look forward to seeing those colorings for the next month, which will be hashtag July Color Your Hoard 2024. And I don't think that I've explained it. So Color Your Hoard basically means um, coloring in your coloring whips that would be the first finished page in your book or coloring in books you have not touched. They're uncolored books and you color a page. It's the first colored page in your book and you submit that to us and Lavelia will then gather all of those colorings from uh, Instagram, or you can um, email her those colorings. Um, and then she will then make a video where she compiles all of the images and posts them on her, fa on her YouTube channel um, as a slideshow. So you should go check those out. Um, and I'll have her um, information down below in the description. All right, y'all, that's all that I have this time. Until next time, take care.